it's always very dangerous to pick winners in science. Um, you can speculate. I think material science is very important. I think nanotech is going to be going to be pretty important. Uh, things that uh, orient towards energy, uh, uh, cheap energy that's not fossil fuel energy, obviously very important. Um, we need a lot more research in the antibiotic area, uh, antivirals, and that sort of, those sorts of things. Um, it, uh, but I think what you want to fund is competent people who are curious and are asking big questions. And if you don't fund those people, you don't get new things. I mean, you just get uh, more, more of the same. And so, uh, so I, I think talent is always everything in science. Genomics, proteomics, and so forth. We can now using modern chip technology. So this is all based in, in, in the physical science, if you like. I mean, the, the development of chip type technologies, the chip readers, the the, the computing, and all the rest of it uh, that we need. And you can get these massive data sets where you can read out, for instance, every gene that's being expressed in a particular situation. So if you've got a, a mouse infected, say, with a virulent influenza virus and a mild influenza virus, you can look at the different gene readouts on the part of the mouse. So you can see what it's doing differently in response to an, a severe infection or to a mild infection. And you can maybe work out where things go wrong. And once you work out where things go wrong, then you can maybe target, develop therapies that you target towards that. Now, it's all very new, and, and, uh, and we're just really getting into this. But we're starting to under understand, for the first time, for instance, why individuals die from virus infections. We've not necessarily known why. And so we're starting to pull apart the whole a business of pathology, if you like. Why it is that disease processes work in the way they do? Why we see the sort of tissue damage that we do? Now, if you understand that, then you can maybe understand where it is you need to target a drug or some sort of molecular interaction to, to intervene within that process and make things go better. So it's a whole new, new thing, and it's only been going for a very short time. Well, yeah, it's about 10 years. It's, it's not that long. And, uh, and of course, then genomics is being used uh, across the board to find particular cancer genes or disease susceptibility genes or disease resistance genes. And, and that's, again, it, it's, we're looking at it as a sort of 50 to 100 year uh, evolutionary process as we work this through. And, and out of that will come a few things, not, not that many, but a few things, which will be very important as therapeutic uh, type tools, for example. Yeah, we can't really analyze the, the, the data sets. The data sets are so enormous, you can't do it on an Excel sheet. You, you have to have computational biology. So, so if I, I was a young guy and I was mathematically good, that's the area I would develop statistical mathematical analysis because it's needed right across science, from climate science to biology to, to cancer research to infectious disease research. And this is the area where, where we don't have enough people, actually. And Terry Speed, for example, who got the Prime Minister's Prize this year, is right in that area. Uh, and we don't have enough, enough really competent people, and it needs a lot of computing power. But, you know, what happened in science We've had enormous success over the past 100 years or so. But what we've done is we've, we've, we've got a lot of the low-hanging fruit. And, and to pick those other fruit is going to take a lot more effort and a lot more science. It's not got, just going to be something simple uh, that, that, that is easily done. The solution may look very simple in the end, but getting to that solution may require a lot of very sophisticated investigation. Got anything to say about material sciences? Well, it's not my field, of course. It's a long way from what I do. But I think material science is extremely important for future uh, energy type solutions uh, for for all sorts of developments. I think it's one of the most important areas of research, and we have had uh, a, a good record with the uh, carbon fiber type technology, which uh, has. I think to some extent taken up in the uh, Boeing 787 Dreamliner, for example. So, so I think we, that's absolutely an area we should drive ahead in, on in a major way. You know, Australia traditionally had a very good history in light engineering development. 
But we, we're probably going to lose a lot of that because we've lost a lot of our manufacturing. It's hard to see the, the car industry surviving in Australia. And, and so, but there are other areas of innovation that depend on high tech and we have to really keep them going. Now, as far as funding research goes, Australian governments haven't been too terrible about funding research. What's been lacking is the funding from the private sector. We have very little private industry funded research in this country and it really reflects the nature of uh, the private sector, uh, where we're so big in mining, mining doesn't need a lot of uh, basic science. If we were going more towards uh, actually refining minerals and so forth, maybe we would want to be developing innovative solutions, but that's not the way things work. I think the in vitro med thing is absolutely ridiculous. I, I think uh, if you want to make protein in vitro, fine. But in vitro meat is absurd. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, cell culture is a very expensive process. And you, you have to, and what do we use? Mostly in our cell culture, we use fetal calf serum, for God's sake. I mean, if you want meat, you have animals. And um, those grazing animals are a very good way of converting grass into meat. So I don't think very much of that. I mean, you may have seen that movie Soil and Green, for instance, where they reprocess people into protein, but that's uh, uh, sort of science fiction. So no, I don't think much of those things, but I think we, we can think of synthetic protein type products that, uh, that would replace, uh, would, would provide that elements in our, those elements in our diet. And that kind of, uh, I think we'll probably see more of that. Um, so, uh, but it's true that meat is a very, uh, uh, very energy expensive way to develop high value protein. I, I think uh, uh, we need to develop drought resistant species, that's very clear. If we had drought resist, better drought resistance grains, we could possibly see a lot of, 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 pro of plantings through periods of great stress until we do get some rain. We need to develop, uh, we need to think, be thinking a lot more about heat resistance. Uh, we need to be thinking more about growing plants or growing uh, food products under more controlled conditions uh, where we can limit the effect of uh, severe environmental events and so forth, severe storms and so forth. So I think there's a whole lot of research that needs to go on. Uh, and of course, you know, some of this, you, we, some sort of synthetic type products and so forth may become economically realistic in the future. So. Um, I'm, I'm not heavily involved in that, but, uh, but one of the barriers is really the, um, uh, the, barrier, the, the sort of perceptions that genetically modified foods are dangerous. There's no evidence they are dangerous, and, uh, and I think we need to be able to use those technologies. But it's a, it's a highly emotional area. Well, as a conspiracy mindset towards just about everything now, I mean, the drug companies, the, the scientists and everything. So. You, know, you can go down that road intellectually if you want to. It's particularly unproductive and useless. I think uh, basically uh, we certainly do have situations where, for instance, uh, major energy producers are uh, funding uh, uh, climate change denial, for example. So, you know, these things are out there, uh, whether they're actually conspiracies or they're just individuals acting and and uh, doing the same sort of thing is another issue. I'm not a great conspiracy theorist, uh, particularly for the United States. I mean, Americans can't shut up long enough to keep up a conspiracy for very long. And think of the openness that's uh, resulted and often with disastrous consequences from these uh, various WikiLeak type uh, situations and so forth. So I think the idea of secrecy and conspiracy is, uh, is less compelling, but the idea of sort of Mass nuttiness is pretty, uh, pretty uh, well established. I, think. <laughs> you know, it's, it's people who will not listen to any rational argument, and uh, it's totally emotional. <laughs>